Hey everybody, today I have some beautiful parts for you and these are the solid top mounts by PDV Motorsports. If you recall in one of my other videos, I took a look at the deflection in the uh, microcell foam material that holds the mounting washer for the damper and what we saw is that the uh, damper rod could move up and down and have a lot of play before the microcell material tensioned up and the damper rod was then allowed to work within the shock absorber itself. So Ryan at PDV Motorsports made these uh, beautiful solid top mounts which use a uh, spherical bearing which should eliminate all of that play and I'm curious to see how much of a difference that makes. So taking a bit of a closer look at the PDV Motorsports top mounts, we can see it's got this nice uh, blue anodization. The surface of it feels very smooth, and even if we look around to other surfaces of it, you know, the uh, circular barrel here or the various trusses, um, everything is machined very nicely. It's smooth, you know, and none of the edges are so sharp you think you might accidentally cut yourself. And, uh, you know, we see the OE cup uh, type in here, so your bump stop should fit securely in here and stay snug uh, as well. Uh, in the center, you can see we've got a pretty good size spherical bearing here, and uh, PDV gives you some uh, adapters for your shock absorber. So we have a, one for the lower, and your damper rod will slide in there. This will cover, uh, uh, go around that, and then uh, be inserted through the bottom. And then on the top side, you have your mounting nut, which will go then and thread against the uh, top threads of the uh, damper rod. And then another nice touch that PDV includes with these is they include a uh, replacement set of the OE uh, mo moisture sealing gaskets, which go um, on the top here. So that's a, a nice touch. Now, one thing I do notice is the stock cap that would uh, mount over here. <clears throat> and you can actually see it in this gasket. There's this little hole right here. Uh, there's a little tail of that cap that goes there, but there isn't a provision or a hole for that tail on this top mount itself. So you will probably have to cut that off, grind it off, um, but uh, ultimately I don't really think that's going to be too much of an issue. That really just keeps uh, the thing indexed, uh, so it's a nice to have. So with that quick overview said, let's go ahead and throw this on the car. So I know I said earlier how the gasket has this little hole in it for the tail in the uh, top cap here. You can see that on the left. But actually we're not going to be reusing this top cap anyways because, well, this hole up here for the spherical bearing is much bigger than uh, the hole on the, you know, the OE top mount. And if you overlay this you know, here, you can clearly see that that hole size in here is smaller. So, you know, you'll put the gasket here, but if you tried to put the cap on, well, you know, it, it would just sit very loosely in there, so there's no point in using it because it's not sitting snug in this little recess um, and, uh, you know, snapping into place. So we actually won't be reusing this part. We won't be clipping that off, but we will be placing this gasket over here. And, you know, this hole over here has to be larger for a couple reasons. One is, um, obviously, you know, you have the spherical bearing itself, but two, like, if you look, how much the spherical bearing can articulate, right? You have to give that amount of clearance for it. Otherwise, if it were to articulate a certain way, well, you know, it would just end up hitting the sidewall here. So this is one of the benefits of a spherical bearing is as your suspension, uh, you know, compresses and decompresses, this is going to want to rock like that. And so the spherical bearing actually allows it to articulate uh, how it wants to be naturally, instead of being like a side bending load in the actual damper shaft itself. All right, so we've got the PDV Motorsports rear top mounts in the car now, taking it for a drive. And well, you know, what have I noticed over this period? Really nothing significant in terms of uh, NVH. You know, I was a little bit worried because of that solid top mount, we were gonna hear a little bit more sharp, you know, pinging or maybe some clanking noises because of that. But really, I haven't noticed anything. Um, even with the uh, you know ride quality itself, you would think that it should be a little bit more taut, a little bit firm. Maybe you feel a bit those impacts a little bit more harshly, but no, um, it's been pretty unremarkable, and that is a fantastic thing because one, I know my dampers are acting like a dampers for more of the stroke or more of the time now, and two, well, you know nobody wants NVH. So I can go on and on about how subjectively I don't notice any significant difference in the ride quality, you know, the NVH, but what if also I could show you objectively that it doesn't make a bad difference, um, only a positive one. And well, you know, of course it wouldn't be me unless I was 
trying to do that. So what I did is I mounted an accelerometer in the back of the uh, wagon here on a hard point close to the uh, wheel well so we could pick up all those impulses from the top mounts. And then, well, you know, I got some readings along this terribly paved section of 680. You know, it's got absolute third world grade paving on it. Um, they're actually supposed to do construction on it, which is probably the first time they've really done uh, resurfacing in over a decade because, well, this is California. And, uh, you know, I got a bunch of accelerometer data from here. But that wouldn't really be meaningful unless we also saw what a smooth road looked like. So I also did some benchmarking on some very smooth roads around here because, well, my city has a decent amount of money and they maintain their roads, which I am very thankful for, by the way. Great property values. So uh, if you were to look at that data, you know, you would see a bunch of, you know, spikes and whatnot. And it might not be obvious if there's a difference between uh, the populations. So what I also did is I also looked at the jerk because jerk is the derivative or the rate of change of acceleration. And when you feel an impulse and it feels harsh, well, that's because of the jerk, right? You know, if someone takes you and grabs you and shakes you very violently all of a sudden, you say it feels jerky because scientifically it does. So uh, if you didn't know that fun little fact, there you go, jerk is an actual scientific uh, uh, name and it actually has a scientific meaning of the rate of change of acceleration. So as I mentioned before, I took smooth road baseline data and I used that to filter out all of the smooth road type data readings from the horribly paved freeway as well as a test road that I like to use but is also pretty poorly graded. And the reason why we do that is, well, we don't care about that smooth road data. I don't care about this, the sections of freeway that have good paving. I only care about the sections of freeway that have bad paving, that you're going to feel that jarring jerkiness through the seed. And so by doing that, we can only look at what we actually care about. And then what I also did is I put everything into box plots because, well, then you can actually take a look at, you know, your sample population and you can use that data to... Uh, compare those populations to each other and well when you compare the box plots to each other well then you can also run a t-test on it and say whether or not the populations are statistically significantly different or not and to give you an idea of how that works if you look at the box plot of the smooth road versus the box plot of the uh, uh, the freeway right you can see that they look different right you know they have a different maximum and uh, in addition to that the area within the box plot itself the interquartile range right the area within the blue box here that's also significantly different and you know if you put this into a t-test it'll say yes these two populations are different so i did that exact same analysis with the acceleration data um, looking at the uh, freeway and well you know the box plots and the acceleration data look pretty darn similar and that's because statistically they are the same population so that tells me there that uh, the before and after right with the stock top mount on the left and the pdv top mounts on the right there is no significant difference in the uh in the accelerometer data and also if we look at the jerk plot right once again the jerkiness of it or the rate of change of that acceleration that box plot also looks incredibly similar uh, and that's because statistically it is the same population again once again saying that the pdv motorsports top mounts do not add any uh vibration vibra vibration or harshness so how does that translate on the kind of twisty road that i uh, like to use well once again if you look at the box plots on the acceleration data they look pretty much the same very similar and yes doing a t-test once again says that they are statistically the same so once again the conclusion there is the pdv is the same as a stock and lastly if we look at the jerk on the winding road once again all of that data if you look at the uh you know the raw jerk data itself as well as you know once it's sorted in the box plots it looks identical between the left and the right between the stock top mount and the PDV. So that's fantastic news for PDV Motorsports. You know, they've made a great product here that, uh, you know, makes your dampers work more effectively and doesn't manage to add any uh, NVH. So overall, I am pretty pleased with the PDV Motorsports rear top mounts. Um, they seem like a good upgrade to me. 
Uh, the only thing we'll have to see is how they hold up over time uh, being a spherical bearing and all and getting that axial load. That said, the way that the rear suspension is architectured in these uh, BMW uh, F, you know, 2X, F3, X, F8, Xs is such that it shouldn't be seeing very high load because all you really have is just, you know, the damper rod itself and you know, there's no like spring loads or anything else going through there like you would on a uh, camber plane in the top. So goodbye. I can recommend this and uh, I will be picking up a set of these for the M2 when PDV launches their F8X version.